So I deliberately wrinkled this corner of the drawing because it models exactly what. Yes. Okay. Okay. Uh, exactly. I deliberately wrinkled the, this corner of the drawing just because it mimics exactly what, what a lot of what Trey starts to do. Plus, we've got these edges over here and things like that. So, so if we there are three ways to address uh, the the overall this overall gray texture here. The first is just with uh, the magic wand tool. Um, and the magic wand tool has a couple of fun settings underneath it. The quick selection tool or the magic wand. The magic wand can be set with a couple of different variables, the sample size or and the tolerance of the magic wand. So if you click, click on the magic wand and just make a big selection, you'll start to notice all of these areas of gray that are noticeable across the drawing. This may or may not be the most desirable way Woo, to approach the drawing in terms of where the white actually is or where the edge of the drawing is. But if I deselect and I change the tolerance of the magic wand to 30, uh, we will see that it has a slightly different behavior to it. And it's, it is indeed starting to select just all of these areas of gray. And, uh, and if you change it again, if you change uh, the tolerance once again up to 40, for example, it's going to basically start to select the full edge of your drawing, but it might start to impact some of your grays or any sort of the spill out that you have here. So this is the first method, and, and by simply using the magic wand tool and then, and then hitting the delete key, Photoshop will ask you, well, what do you want to do with that? Do you want foreground color, background color, content aware, pattern history, black, 50% gray or white? Well, what do you want to replace that with? So Photoshop will ask you that. Well, I want to say white and normal um, and 100% and opacity, and it gives me a pretty stark white exterior now edge of the drawing, which may or may not be what I'm after. But in many cases, that might be exactly what you're after. And then I can come in, I can pull a ruler line down. By the way, the ruler is really important for me in Photoshop. I like to go to View and Rulers and turn them on. And then I like to pull them down just to see if, if my image is, is exactly where I want it to be. And in this case, I think I need to in, rotate the image. So I go under Image, Image Rotation, Arbitrary, and I enter a value of maybe, let's say, one degree clockwise. And this is starting to get me you know, into the neighborhood of where I think uh, this drawing needs to be. Then uh, I'll, I'll, I'll go back to this, this guideline. I'll push it away. And then I'm just going to go to the lasso tool. Lasso, there are three options under the lasso tool. There's the lasso tool, the polygonal lasso tool, and the magnetic lasso tool. And I will just draw a simple lasso around the drawing of where I think the drawing is. And I think it's, you know, this general area here. Just go yonder, yonder around there. And over here. Then I'm going to go to select, and then I'm going to go to select inverse. So I've basically taken the lasso and I've drawn it around the entire drawing, and now I've gone to select, and then I've selected the inverse of that. I hit delete. Photoshop will ask me, well, what do you want to do with that fill? I said, well, I want it to be white. And then I deselect, and there it is. There is a white, clean edge around your drawing. Uh, going from, now you want to do the inverse. Go back, select inverse, then hit delete. Yep. Okay. Now, in some cases, Photoshop will, will, will just make it transparent. In that case, you just want to grab the paint bucket and some white and drop some paint. Just to make sure, are you reviewing this? Sorry? Did you start the video? Hello. Yes. Yes. Hello. Yes. Yes. This is this is a close up of my shirt. Okay. Okay. That's method one. All right. Method one. Okay. Any questions? Want me to repeat that? Yes. All right, for some of you it's appearing transparent, some of you it's appearing black. So, 
Photoshop giving you that option or not? What I would do in this case, select inverse, delete. In my, my case, this I'm running Photoshop 2015, and it's giving me the option of white, black, 50% gray. I'm selecting white. In any case, if that's not if it's not giving you that option, what I would do is come over to the foreground color and push it to white. Then try it again. Okay. In some cases it might be transparent. But I'm looking around and I'm seeing most of you got it. Okay, that's method one. Close it out. I'm going to start over again. Don't save. All right, method two. Method two. Method two is to, uh, first of all, I want to, I want to uh, probably rotate this. I, you know, I deliberately kind of set this up so that one degree clockwise will be the case. I, you can always, if you have view rulers turned on, you can pull down a ruler and compare it to one of your guidelines or your horizon line. Just make sure that you're kosher there. You'll notice a significant difference between this white and this gray. The gray of this trace paper versus the white of the background. We can attack this another way. I'm going to go to select, color range, select, color range, select, and then I will select this weird gray that's there. And I have a, a, a way, the ability to control the fuzziness of that, which is kind of like saying tolerance. So I'm going to. Yeah, I don't want to select all of it, but I want to select a good portion of it that gets that, that white-gray edge around the whole thing. Okay. And what you'll notice is that, oh, <laughs> it's selected stuff inside the drawing. All right, that's not exactly where we want to be. Okay, not exactly where we want to be. Um, so, so I'm going to deselect it, and I'm going to try it again. Select color range, and I'm going to select the grayest part of this and just kind of isolate that. I can deal with the selection versus the image. I, there's other variables like localized color clusters. You'll notice here it's just it's dealing with just about most of that gray. Okay. And it's, unfortunately, it's now selected other stuff in here. This is not a situation where I want to hit that delete button because it'll delete stuff in here. We could try it, but you'll notice that your drawing, parts of your drawing might disappear. So I'm not so hip to that. So I'm going to go step backward. And what I can do then if this works for me, then I can, it still gives me a, a fairly straightforward method of attack by which I can select a brush of some kind and of some size and of some hardness and simply paint white around these edges here. Just kind of get in there and just clean up these edges, but not everything interior. I just, and this gives me a little more control if I just select the color range and it just gives me a nice soft edge around my drawing, like so, and then deselect, and then go back to the lasso and simply draw a border in that painted range, right? Just draw a line through those areas that I painted. And that attacks the gray, wrinkled trace paper effect. What essentially you've done is painted a, a line or a border Select inverse, delete contents white, or simply push your foreground color to white and it will disappear. What this does now, this is different than the previous method. I'm not losing some of my grays in my foreground. It gives me a little bit more control about where this white deletion goes before I make that lasso. And now I've preserved a lot of the grays that are in my foreground gives you more control. Okay. That's 
the second method. Okay. So try that to make sense. Not yes, not you know, shake your head, yes, no, yes, no. Okay. Extreme close up. Okay. That's the second method. Open it again. Nope, not that one. <coughs> and again, I just need to rotate it clockwise one degree. The third is the magnetic lasso tool. There are three lassos under the lasso tool. There is the lasso, there is the polygonal lasso, my favorite and then the magnetic lasso. Again, it, it has a few um, variables, okay, uh, from, from width to feather and contrast, but what you're doing then is telling Photoshop to drag a magnetic lasso over something. And what this can do is drag a lasso over complex curves and color areas. And like around this bicycle wheel and around the signature, and around this cast shadow, and then around this, and then up around the back bicycle wheel again, and then up around here, and then around there, and then around there, and then until you're closed. Magnetic lasso is a fairly smart tool that will simply isolate one color grouping from another. Right? And then we can either delete and then make that white, whoops! Uh oh. Select inverse, delete white, and that can create a white background around some sort of color drawing, color grouping. Okay. Can I get rid of this one? Hit escape. Yeah, to back out of a magnetic lasso or any lasso, you just hit escape. Those are three methods. Neither are foolproof. Neither are perfect. They depend on what the drawing is, right? And how the drawing is made, what kinds of color groupings are in there, all kinds of variables. But if you know all three methods, they will work. They will work for the different drawings that you have. But this is essentially to create a clean white border around a drawing. Okay. So you select. You can see that wasn't perfect, so I will probably come in here for my purposes here and grab the polygonal lasso and make a nice clean break against my sky here. I hit the shift key to make a perfectly straight line. Shift key is a great tool in Photoshop and across all Adobe and that makes a nice clean break there. Okay. And then I might even you know, decide what kind of hard border I want. Now, you can see how different that is. This is a very hard border. Eh. For, for out of the three methods that I described, which would be best for this drawing? First Me one. Method First one, one, method two, or method three? I'd say one. First one, okay. A couple of you say the second one. <laughs> I'm going for the second one personally because, again, I care about these foreground grays. I'm kind of partial to how my gray marker was streaking there. So, so I think for my drawing here, my purposes here, I think I'm going to go with method two. So, so I'll just open that again. No, nope, not that one. Another thing that's interesting, and that is when Sometimes drawings are big, and you scan them in two pieces, like this one. You'll see funny lines like this. See that funny line right there, right next to the moon there? Kind of faint, but it's kind of there. Okay. The Band-Aid. Look for a Band-Aid. That's called the Spot Healing Tool. Wonderful tool. Oh my gosh. Just drag it over there, and it goes, wah! All right, that didn't work. but. It, the spot healing tool is what your magazine editors are using for the fashion magazines and things like that. Spot healing tool can work wonders when you're dealing with edges that don't work so well. 
when you've got spots or you've got hard edges, the spot healing tool is a tool that a lot of magazine editors and folks out in the fashion industry and photography use a lot. So that can help clean up like this area right there. Eh, maybe not. <laughs> okay, but or or maybe a, a hard edge right there. Yeah. Not working for me. But in many cases that, that healing tool has been a nice one. So I said method two, didn't I? Oh, okay. Select color range, gray, just fuzziness. It's kind of like adjusting tolerance. Okay. Take a brush, make it white. Make an edge. Seven thirty. Yep. Yep. I can also just get in here and paint away stuff, right? Just paint away that edge. Just paint this away. Paint this away again because I'm partial to these grays in the foreground. And then I'll just make a lasso. Okay, makes sense. Three methods. Not all are perfect, but depending on what the drawing is, should work. Get a nice white clean edge so they look good in your portfolio and in PowerPoints and on boards and stuff like that. Nice white clean edge. These trace drawings are pretty forgiving but they may require some brightness and contrast changes. Select inverse, delete, white, okay. Deselect, save. If we just go into adjustment, brightness and contrast, image, adjust, brightness and contrast, you may want to just play with brightness and contrast now, just if you concern about color vibrancy or darkness or how something appears you know just these in, in just the very small numbers just push them around a little bit and you'll discover that your trace drawings do take on a slightly different look when you just push the brightness contrast a little bit on the background layer and the background layer is locked. If for any reason you need to deal with that background layer, just double click on the layer and it will turn it into layer zero. That layer is now editable. So for any reason at all. What's going on in the corner? What's going on over there? <laughs> He's having a great time. Awesome. Yeah. Okay. That's because he learned some of this in 605. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> 